Hello! This episode of Watch Out for Fireballs is produced by Elliot, who is a champion, and he brings champions in tow to fight the Ivory King. Uh, champions such as Gotham Gianzi, Jod Razak, Sauce Cup, Nick P, and someone who is either Tanuki Boot or Tanukit Boot. Uh, there's a T in there. It feels a little bit odd. I don't know what to do about it, and I'm sorry. And I'm working on it, and I'm sorry. If you'd like to join them, go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv, darling. <laughs> My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. And you're listening to Watch Out for Fireballs. It is a Games Club podcast. And this week we are talking about Half-Life Alex, which is a first-person shooter developed and published by Valve for PC Virtual Reality Systems in 2020. Yeah, uh, this episode is ex- executive produced by Elliot. Thank you, Elliot. Thank you, Elliot, for... Uh, uh, having us do this, uh, our first VR game, uh, yes. that, that's, I mean, not wild because VR is super niche, uh, but it might as well have been this. <laughs> it's uh, it makes a lot of sense. Yes. Uh, cause th- this is a real, uh, trailblazer in terms of VR. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, arguably the, the first real like triple a killer app. Yes. Uh, kind of thing for VR. Mm-hmm. Like it pushed a lot of systems. Yeah. like that and then we can discuss whether or not that is that is ultimately where vr ought to go <laughs> uh yeah i mean my this is i i was talking about this on twitter uh-huh. um anybody anybody looking for a three-hour love fest around this i intend to make this episode complicated uh <laughs> because it is uh there is a stratification system that happens with with vr mm-hmm. uh like i think this is probably an a or a plus game that i had a b minus experience with Mm-hmm. Um, almost entirely due to VR issues. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I, I imagine that if you were to take a brain scan of everyone who played this and what they thought of it, there would be a really neat divide between, uh, push to walk and teleport walk. True. Like teleport walk makes this much harder and like everything takes twice as long. Oh, really? It's yeah. Like huh. you have to position, like you have to like get facing the right place and like, I kept opening doors and running into myself <laughs> and, and stuff. And it just like, what there's not smooth, not, That's especially weird. once it got like action. <laughs> That's weird. Cause I did teleport because of motion sickness issues. I had a great time with this. Like I, I know it's complicated, but yeah, that's, uh, I don't know if that's going to be the stratification. I, I like it. Eventually the teleporting disappeared. I, um, and nothing ever disappeared for this for me. <laughs> uh, not one thing. So, yeah. and the, the entire runtime, which when I looked up, um, like long plays of this to remind mm-hmm. myself my play clock on this was like three times as long yeah. uh, because it just took me forever to do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So we, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about it. It's not, uh, I would, it's re- it's really interesting. Like we'll, we'll get into it. <laughs> yeah. Like there, there's just a lot of questions that are raised by this, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, before, before we go too much deeper in, we should also say this is a premium episode. Uh, yes. That means everybody's going to get these generalities. We're going to talk about a few of these things, I think. Uh, and uh, our uh, patrons, our uh, members there, get the full episode uh, when we go. And, I, you know, it, it would make very little sense to spoil, like, the major thing that happens at the end of this and the generalities because it's, it's kind of got nothing to do, you know? Yeah. 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 It, it's a, this, is a, this is a Half-Life game. It's not a Gaiden game. Right. Uh, is the only thing that I will say that's, you know, not spoiling anything. It's just, mm-hmm. it's real, mm-hmm. you know, it is a real video game. Yes. Um, there's also, we're going to end up talking about the way that VR impacts this because it's impossible not to, at least for mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Um, we are going to have a longer discussion about VR kind of in general in the dispatch episode. Yeah. Uh, this being the first major game, uh, at least myself that I completed. Mm-hmm. 
uh, in VR and definitely yeah. the longest game and the, the most uh, media experience mm-hmm. that I've done. Yeah. Uh, no. So this, it would seem like a Gaiden game uh, because it takes place five years before the events of Half-Life 2. This is an interquel. Uh, you play mm-hmm. as Alex Vance, uh, the super girlfriend from Half-Life 2 in the episodes. Um, mm-hmm. I'm saying that just because of the way they have her give you eyes the entire time. Uh, yes. But... Uh, you are first trying to rescue her captured father, Eli Vance, a uh, Black Mesa scientist, and then trying to uncover this uh, secret weapon that is being held by the Combine. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you play as uh, Alex the entire time, uh, first person, and you are utilizing VR to solve puzzles and fight enemies uh, at like what is three quarters of like a full Half-Life game. Mm-hmm. The the uh, combat encounters and puzzles are all simplified yes. um, for the for the medium, but the dedication to it being doing all the Half Life things, having the Half Life enemies on display, things like that is pretty admirable. It's admirable and surprising. Yes. Yeah. Um, movement, as we alluded to earlier, uh, movement is customizable. Um, so if this is worth talking about, cause there are people who just don't know what's up with VR, right? Yeah. Like, haven't played it because it's, it's not an inclusive platform. Uh-huh. Um, VR movement is either handled like a video game, like first, you know, FPS, you move the stick to move your character. Mm-hmm. This causes motion sickness in some people. Oh yeah. No, uh, I can't, I can't stand the feeling. Uh, I can do it on PC because whatever I'm sitting in a chair and I know it, but if yeah. I am in a 3d world and the game is making me feel like my body is useless and I am just a head moving in space moving. with hands dangling it, down, it's too much. <laughs> it immediately makes me want to puke. Oh yeah. I, I was trying so hard with, um, resident evil four VR uh-huh. to make it work. And I, I just, uh, and you can fuck around with settings all you want. Like, uh-huh. you know, there might, I kept thinking like there might be some magical field of view that just made it work. Yeah. You know, so yeah. some combination of, of elements, but I just couldn't get there. Yeah. Uh, the alternative for this is they do a, uh, teleport where when you use the analog stick, you throw a little laser at mm-hmm. where you'll be. It'll show you where you'll land. You let go and you teleport there. Yes. Um, this is really interesting. Uh, so think about that in terms of how that impacts shooters. Mm-hmm. You teleport, you move instantly, or not instantly because you have to wait for the little little thing, but nearly instantly. You move much faster mm-hmm. this way because there's not uh, you you don't move very fast in this game. Yeah, uh, generally, when I was watching the, uh, the somebody play it without this, um, you teleport instantly uh, in a direction. Yeah, through here. So it's almost like it, it points. It felt like having a blink. Uh huh. <laughs> which is not walking. <laughs> No, it's, 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 it's not walking. If that sounds disorienting, it's more disorienting to watch other people do than to do for yourself. And, yeah. um, like facing is really important in this as well. Like, instead of like, okay, I'm going to, you know, go that I'm going to go over there, but I'm going to be facing in the same direction. Uh, no, when you throw out the little laser, like when you, uh, do that, you, uh, can also, uh, rotate the stick in order to, um, uh, like you see the little feet move to show which way you'll be facing when you go, uh, when you, when you, when you end up there and that ends up being the way that you, uh, that you move around. Yes. Uh, so those are the two major options, Mm -hmm. um, for doing this. Um, the, uh, the other thing that that'll happen, they do cool things with this interface. So like, this is also how you jump. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're going to make a fall that will kill you, it will turn to a little skull and crossbones, uh, down here. So they, they do a lot of things with this, this visual information. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and this is not like a, uh, it's not a stationary game. I, I imagine it can be played as one. I didn't mm. find the settings for it in there. Uh, with, with VR, it's either like, okay, is this a game that you play sitting still? Like, is it a, uh, you know, uh, like a rail shooter where you're basically sitting in a, uh, like a roller coaster car taking shots at stuff? Um, or it can be room scale where when you put on your headset, it is like at the system level, uh, at least on Oculus systems, uh, you define your boundary saying like, okay, mm-hmm. this is the safe area. And then when you approach it, it puts up like a little grid line saying like, Hey, beyond this, maybe your television or a wall or something like that. And, yes. you know, within that space, you can turn around, you can do a little, little bit of walking. Like I play this in my living room, which is the largest area. I just move the coffee table out of the way uh Mm -hmm. to uh to you know to do that so like you are walking around in a limited space in addition to doing this um uh doing this teleporting stuff 
Yes. Yeah. It probably also something that impacted my experience a little bit. Like I don't have a big empty space, mm-hmm. uh, especially now. My my fiance just moved in. There are boxes everywhere. Yeah. So I did a, a smaller empty space and also tried to do stationary. Like stationary mm-hmm. is available for this. Uh, mm-hmm. It's awkward. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't uh, without a lot of space. It was also awkward to do room scale. Yeah. Uh, this like not enough room to move around to be um optional and that's ultimately like uh the thing that uh is interesting about vr is that like and this is stuff we're going to talk about more like when i say it's not uh an inclusive platform like it's not the game's fault that no. i don't own a big empty room but it's not my fault either <laughs> you know it's it's just a thing like it's just this isn't for you nope you know and that's a that's a shitty thing uh-huh uh, i you know i don't my instincts say that sucks yeah you know yeah. like something shouldn't you know, this just isn't not you not you Guillermo. Mm-hmm. like <laughs> that's what it feels like a little bit yeah um you know <laughs> and and same thing with the the motion stuff mm-hmm. you know like uh the, the motion sickness stuff it just feels like oh this isn't for you yeah you don't yeah. get to have this it's not your fault it's not our fault it's nobody's fault this is just for a subset of the person uh population you can't so- self-select for it mm-hmm. like you can't uh, flip a switch and say, I have a big empty room. Yeah. All you, you have know? to do is look at the like advertisements for VR or like the how to videos that they put in when you're setting it up. And it's like, Oh, that's a, that's a warehouse. You like, you, yeah. you live in a, you like, <laughs> yeah. the, you live in a trendy a loft loft office. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you live in the loft from big. Of course you can do this. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the uh, tricky, tricky for me, mm-hmm. uh, for Gary, um, What's kind of cool is this is since it's Half Life, Half Life is always or ha- starting with Half Life Two actually, Half Life has always been uh, shooter first, but physics second. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way they do this is by making it so you can manipulate the world, mm-hmm. uh, you can pick up things. Um, you have to do this for puzzles and stuff, turn valves, flip switches and stuff, open doors. You can also just move boxes, lift up random nonsense. Yeah, all around. And this ends up, you know, being valuable. You you pick you pick up boxes to move it around to like get up on top of stuff in order to you know find resources. Uh, yep. The VR angle of this, I mean, we'll talk about that. But like um, using objects in the world to search in detail uh, for uh, resources that are going to jump you ahead of a curve is a huge part of this. Um, mm-hmm. And that is made possible by the fact that just like interacting with stuff is really easy and modeled and thoughtfully put together. Right. Yeah. Like you, you rummage. Yeah. Uh, it, it's one of those things. We'll, we'll get into this also when we talk about reloading and it's, it's something that's going to bleed into the dispatch about VR mm-hmm. in general, because a question that I have, and I'm not trying to be a kill, bo- kill joy. It's a literally a question. I'm not saying one way or another. Mm-hmm. I wonder how much gas that has. Yeah. You know, like the novel, what is the novelty versus what is the actual fun? Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, and I think there's a, there's a question there. Like reloading is also a little order of operations. Now it's immensely satisfying and cool uh, to do it in the game. It adds tension, you know, Mm -hmm. is that where we want to spend our activity? Yes. Like in a game, is that something that's fun for now? Or is that something that in 10 years, (laughs) you know, as this genre evolves, people are still going to want to do this little order of operations thing with their hands to re- do something that's you know nominally not very important to yeah. the grand scheme of a, a game. Will that burn you off? Know? Like, yes. I don't know, the DS Castlevania is eventually making it so you don't have to draw a little rune to cast your boss killing spell. Yeah. Uh, you know, on the I, ha- I have, right. I have concerns about it. Like it's, it's yeah. definitely neat. And part of it, I think is me being suspicious mm-hmm. because, uh, this game stymies my critical vocabulary a lot. Yeah. Like, uh, so you're not constantly bending over in this game. They mm-hmm. give you an item in this called the Russells, which are gravity gloves. So you can yank things towards yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, you do a little flick uh, and it comes towards you and you catch it. And it's a really fun video game action. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's really it. fun. Every time yeah. it, it's satisfying. It feels good. Uh-huh. It's really, really good. Do, again, in five years, will this be fun? Or will right. I wish, will I miss that it w- when it was just a click? Mm-hmm. to do this like will this wear off and i i don't know the answer to it and yeah. i also don't know if it matters uh-huh you know like maybe this is just a thing like a temporary thing that is fun for now and that's enough 
Yeah. What what you don't want to be when you're in our position is that one what is it like a like the PlayStation magazine review about that aliens game for the uh for the PlayStation uh where they describe how terrible the control scheme is and it's just like oh the left stick moves you forward and sideways and backward and the right stick will point the reticle around. <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah. do we want to be the guy saying, yeah, mist is neat, but like really using mice, using mice well, you, to control a game. You also yeah. don't want to be the the person who is absolutely going to bat for the PlayStation move. Right. You know, or whatever, the Xbox connect and be like, this is the fucking future. Uh-huh. You know, like it's tricky. Uh, we don't, we don't know. Uh-huh. It does feel really neat, but it like, does. I don't, I don't trust novelty, Yeah, you know, as a thing. Like if I can't point to other things that are neat about it. Mm-hmm. I don't trust novelty and the, the grabbing things is feels like novelty. The reloading does more for game design. Yeah. I just question whether it's something you want in every game. Right. Um, the, uh, they don't, uh, it's really interesting too. something I want to talk about in the next episode in the dispatch, um, is the, the value of verisimilitude, mm-hmm. um, and how much this provides it because it, it feels like it is a more realistic way to do things. Um, but there's fudging. And, yeah. Uh not only do you have a magical super glove, but you also they do things like no matter how far away something is, it takes the same amount of time mm-hmm. uh, to catch it. So you just get used to that rhythm. You're not yeah. really making a choice in that situation. It just becomes a reflex. Yeah. You know. You know. It, 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 I think that it is important that, that it is two actions, the, uh, you know, the pull and then the catch, the yank and then mm-hmm. the catch. It's just, you know, kind of like in super hot, uh, and in super hot VR where when an enemy drops something, it immediately just like they hot potato it right into your face, you know, yeah. like it's that, like that is a gameplay design consideration that is for fun as opposed to for realism, which yes. feels like a good decision. Yeah. And, and figuring out the, the balance between those two adjectives yeah. Yeah. for these mechanics is, is mm. interesting. Yeah. Uh, why me. is, why is verisimilitude on like, I don't know, moving a box around, uh, by needing you, Oh, you need two hands for that. Um, yeah. like, like why is like, why is that verisimilitude good? But like things moving at different velocities, <laughs> you know, is that or, verisimilitude you know, bad yeah, or yeah. is, is the verisimilitude of only being able to store ammo in a backpack. Right. Versus having like a, a an inventory, like having mm-hmm. tons of guns that just or like items that just kind of like hang out in a zone. Yeah, is that good verisimilitude, you know, or is that bad verisimilitude? Yeah, it's neat verisimilitude for now. <laughs> yeah, um, you know? so <laughs> so it's like again, it's hard to talk about things critically because oftentimes we are saying like, hey, here's where this went, here's where this came from. Um, this came kind of from nowhere. <laughs> you know yes. to a degree that they're when they're talking about it, like, it yeah Go yeah ahead. like when i was talking about like vr is weird because it feels like it makes mechanics out of nothing uh-huh you know it's just uh you know hey instead of clicking a button you turn a knob bam mechanic you know <laughs> and so now there's a knob turning mechanic uh-huh. in the game that they can kind of do things with and it's like it it creates a new thing uh but i don't know if that thing is good like yes. I, I don't know if they, yeah I don't know where it's at <laughs> yeah so like yeah. We, we have developed a vocabulary out of context of what came before and uh, there's little of what came before and also real uncertainty about like if we say this if we say this is good are we the people who were talking about in you know indigo prophecy it's like oh you move the stick left and right and then he mops differently like, yeah <laughs> there, there's a little bit of that like. Did design for people who are going to lose their mind about virgin, you know, brushing the virtual teeth, you know, or like doing the, the virtual lawn care. Uh, hey, you know? I, I, I got killed for virtual lawn care. I know yeah. you did, and you have real, you own a lawn. I know, right? Uh, it, it is your God's own joke. <laughs> hey, on a lawn, man. You I know, mow, right? And you do. You yeah, just want to get some sport mowing in the side. You, you, you can all- you can only mow it once every couple of weeks, though. You can mow you know, it before then. It just won't cut the grass, but you can still run the mower and do a little walk. I'm not going to spend the gas. Come on. Oh, my God. Just don't turn <laughs> it on. Just walk the little guy. <laughs> but And listen to an MP3 of a lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> um i guess what i'm saying is i'm more of a mark for this stuff than you are I think. yeah like yeah. do it doing a mundane thing 
in a yeah. video game. Like if, if the value of that is something that is a uh, highly cilantro, mm-hmm. I think uh, <laughs> you, get, you get three weapons um, over the course of this game. They're all one handed uh, there. You get a cool little neat touch. If you put your hands together, you'll study it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so you, you uh, can actually fire the, uh, the shotgun and the uh, submachine gun two handed and it's mm-hmm. easier. Yes. Um, you know, if you think to do it. Yeah, I mean, think to do it. I just naturally did it. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. like just like, oh yeah, like the, like this is the, this is the posture for firing a gun. It feels weird to you just kind of like awkwardly. Like, eh. No, I'm gonna post up and look down the sights, and then when I saw that it did the latch, and then it was steadier, I was like, oh, that rules. Like yeah, I think neat. that like that is also an appeal of the VR thing, which is just oh, they're designing to account for natural like natural instinct with the way you yes. move and interact with stuff. Yeah, yeah. You you know, and you shut one eye looking through oh, the sight. You know, things like that, like just things that you would do normally. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Um, And and like, yeah, you shut one eye because you're aiming down the sights. Uh, You know, Mm -hmm. you just when you get one of these guns, you know, you can do upgrades, but like you're looking down iron sights and bullets count the, uh, you know, like this is kind of doing a bit of a survival horror uh, resource curve kind of thing. You're generally always pretty limited in terms of your ammo stuff. So you are looking down the sights, you are using your actual body to dodge in and out of cover. You know, I feel like an idiot, uh, in, mm-hmm. or probably, no, I looked like an idiot. I felt cool. Like, yeah. like just, uh, you know, solid snaking, or, or, you know, my way in and out of these, uh, you know, pillars and stuff. Yeah. 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 To get, uh, get between things. The, um, each weapon has a different reload mm-hmm. thing. They had to be reloaded manually. Um, and they each have a different kind of mini game for it, like a little order of operations yeah. uh, thing that you do. Um, again, something that I, I'm was really neat and mm-hmm. does at gameplay, like a gameplay mechanic. I will mm-hmm. again, I'll be curious if this is something that the last, yeah. um, what it can do is that, uh, you know, an enemy will, can be close to you. Like you'll need ammo and you'll run out and you have to make distance or you have to go hide, uh, to get ammo. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can be kind of in a panic state, you know, there's a head crab on the ground. It's going to flip over and get you. Mm-hmm. I got to get some ammo going. Yeah. Um, you know, and can I do this thing quickly and under yeah. pressure? Um, yeah, it's neat. It, yeah. it feels scary. Yeah. All of these reco- re- uh, require several motions, uh, to do. So like the pistol, you know, you, you, you drop the magazine, then you pull, pull the new one, you, you, you pop it in and then you have to rack the, uh, you have to rack the slide to mm-hmm. uh to, you know, to put one in the chamber uh you can actually just you can avoid that step if you eject the uh if you eject the magazine while you still have one in the chamber which is neat yeah. like that's just how guns work um uh, but uh like that little rack like if you are in a panic uh it might be tough to do right you know it requires yes. two hands you know there's some dexterity required to it um so tension is added there uh, with the pistol and with the submachine gun, uh, there's also the very real thing, which is like, this is realistic um, ammo mm-hmm. and reloading kind of stuff. So like, you know, if you only have two shots left in your magazine, um, uh, there's no just reflexively pressing R and then magically like you do a reload. Refilling. You, yeah, like refill. The t- you can't top off the clip in this. They are all just, you know magazines that you have yes uh so if you if you dump that you can if you want to have more but then you lose those two bullets unless you you know pick that up later if you remember that it's there to get those two yeah when you you also can't put that in your backpack you have to hold it in your hands if you do that um and hands uh you have two of them Mm -hmm. so that that's a natural (laughs) limitation one of them got a gun in it yeah yeah one of of them you know sometimes has a gun Mm -hmm. uh the uh yeah so again another thing that i think is realistic and add some tension to this i don't know if it has the long haul you know this this realistic bullet thing i think it's it'll ultimately depend on the game right (laughs) yeah i mean it'll definitely depend on the game i guess i just it it always felt like a kindness that bullet Mm -hmm. clips just reloaded yeah. Like I've always had a little bit of contempt for people who complain about that. Yeah. Like yeah. as if they're gun nerds, mm-hmm. you know, like it's like, who, who gives a shit? I just, yeah. I have this many, it's, it's intuitive. I have this many cool. bullets left. And they have games you know? for that. Like yeah. you can play Arma uh, and that, yeah. and you can also, you can also mod your game to have realistic magazines if you would like to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and also my understanding of magazines also is like, if you had some downtime, you could take those remainders. 
Yeah, and yeah. You could just, you, yeah. You, know? you also, you also just wouldn't like drop one of those because like, uh, you know, the Glock magazine is like eight dollars a piece. You're just throwing away eight dollars. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, you don't want to throw eight dollars on the ground. Who are you? <laughs> Elon Musk. Oh, <laughs> oh, uh, topical. Well, topical. Da- yeah. <laughs> what a what a slime. Um, what a combine piece of shit. <laughs> um, Doctor Breen ass yeah. fucker. Yeah. Uh, there, there is no, uh, there's no melee in this. Um, the developers tried to make it work and couldn't make it work, uh, yeah. which leads to you just tearing uh, boards off a thing like a, <laughs> like a Herculean superwoman, which is very funny. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not going to use my ammo for that. Come on. No, no, of course. Like it just, uh, and then uh, so what the the game ends up being is you are exploring these environments like piles of debris, um, looking for these resources. Yeah. So like ammo, um, upgrade materials, which is combine resin, mm-hmm. um, little health injectors, which, uh, you can carry around, but you can't hoard. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, like that, that is a large part of the game. Like it is weirdly, uh, feel to me, uh, again, the, like throw the to me suffix onto everything I say in this, because I don't think that my experience <laughs> is typical, but, right. uh, felt a little bit more modal than other half-life games to me. Mm-hmm. Um, like, oh, shooty part, oh, sneaky part, puzzly part, collecty part, mm. you know, and that's always been half life, but yeah. it, it felt more so to me. Yes. Um, I'm in a room. I have to look behind these paint cans. This is the paint can looking behind section of the mm-hmm. game. They do mm-hmm. overlap, just not as much as in a regular mode. It, feel, it feels like they were giving you more room just as part of the, uh, as just as part of the overall slowing down of the game. We- and one, because scrounging is not a, a half life verb, right? You know, generally, like you you find ammo and stuff, but it's not about mm-hmm. finding ammo behind paint cans. Yeah, you know the 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 scrounge in this is a very different scrounge. Mm-hmm. It's uh, worth saying that like scrounge, like yes, it's important that there are things to find, but also like the space needs to be like cool and well designed. Like there needs to be verisimilitude, and stuff needs to be hidden cleverly. Universally, that is the case as well. Yeah, like it is. It is neat to to be like, all right, crack my knuckles. We've got a supply. We got a supply uh, closet here. Let's get let's get to work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's dynamic uh, ammo. Mm-hmm. stuff uh it does the you know if you're low on ammo it will give you more drops if you have tons of ammo it'll give you fewer uh yeah. this is a pretty tight tightly controlled dynamic difficulty uh yeah. but it does mean that the stuff will vary as well yes um early on before i was shooting i was frustrated because every locker didn't have things in it mm-hmm. i'm like why these lockers so at least one of these lockers has to have something yeah. and then like later when i started running low on ammo things yes. would show up in lockers yeah we mentioned that resin which is going to be one of the main things that you're going to be looking for uh you use those at um uh, special machines called combine fabricators pop up about once a level uh once a chapter Mm -hmm. uh and uh you use these to upgrade the capabilities of your gun by capabilities not talking about stats like hey do more damage this is adding bits and bobs to them so like for the pistol uh like adding a burst fire adding intelligent sights uh onto the thing so they'll highlight uh, enemy weak spots uh you work up to like extended extended ammo and uh like laser sights too which are really big in vr the, the laser sight thing yeah yeah very useful much better than the hollow sight yes uh which is which is uh okay and yeah. it highlights weak points but as a as a sight yes is merely okay to me mm-hmm. um you know you want the uh the speed loader for the shotgun yes that is a a high value item mm-hmm. um there are some items you can store in uh you do get two kind of like pocket dimension inventory slots on each of your gloves what uh, there where, where you can say what and I said what I did say I did oh. say what there, there there's oh. one on your left hand there, there's a pocket on your left hand yeah yeah god <laughs> damn it no yeah no you, there's one in each of your hands um, <laughs> they didn't make one of the gloves different oh huh? <laughs> well, yeah they did one of them has a little uh, readout with your health and your resins and stuff well yeah but they didn't they they, they wouldn't take away that functionality <laughs> well, yeah you you, have, you, have, you have carry two things okay um, yeah uh, but... it's I mean th- that's worth talking about like i don't uh again i i don't want to sound like a killjoy i generally enjoy this game and i objectively think it's probably better than my experience was uh-huh. uh, i do think there's some tutorialization yes issues yeah. with this um and this this kind of leads to that like if you didn't know that that feels like a thing uh-huh um you know i i don't know can't remember if the game told me or if i just stuck something in there yeah yeah um, 
Yeah. No, I never thought to do it. Um, yeah. So like if I, if, okay, I'm going to keep the health and then I'm just going to carry this grenade with me in my offhand. <laughs> you can do both. You can do both. Yeah. yeah. Um, carry things in there. There, uh, You can carry a surprising number of things in here. Like you can carry distraction bottles uh, mm-hmm. to throw. Um it's 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 throwing a bottle to cause a stealth distraction uh <laughs> autumn you're yep. on watch out for fireballs <laughs> um, yeah but yeah you can you can carry things in there but you can't uh have like a huge inventory right. uh the way that you can in in most video games like they right. are uh doing some work to limit um right. that yeah uh, the last system to talk about i think is one of the least successful which is your multi-tool I, I hate this. Uh, yeah. Again, not trying to sound like Killjoy. No, uh, no, I got I, sick of this way quicker than I think that than it wanted me to. Uh, there, there was only one of them that I thought was good throughout. Everything else, it was just like, for, for I really just want to open the supply thing. Like, I want what's in there. I don't it also wanna... doesn't make sense in the game world. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, what's, what is happening here? What is this a metaphor know. for? Like, th- this machine, uh, I was looking online where people were uh, theorizing about this. And they're like, oh, you know, a combine would just have a little identifier chip. But this is if they don't have their identifier chip. It's so they can call, do a simple puzzle. And what your multi-tool is doing is visualizing the circuitry within it. I'm like, if this could and could visualize the circuitry, it could just open it. Yeah. It's just a door. It's just a lock. You yeah. know, it's not that that complicated. Um and it doesn't make any sense that they get more difficult as time goes on. Uh huh. Again, in the world of the thing, like this is a fail safe for combine soldiers. But if combine <laughs> soldiers are in this area, they got to be a little bit smarter. Yeah. You know. <laughs> So what this is, uh, Alex has made uh, this kind of multi-tool. It's a little hacky, hack on the jig, right? Um, and uh, you use that to hack combine electronics. And this is always through uh, mini games. Like if yes. you encounter one of these once or twice, it'd be fine. Uh, but they wore they wear out their welcome very very quick. Yes. Uh, let's talk about the good one before we hit the bad ones. The good one the, to the, me. The, to me yeah the, the good one's not good in without a room yeah uh, the the good one was the one that made me smash my hand into my keyboard all the time Ew. uh like trying yeah. to do it yeah um, so so good with good asterisk with a room is the rewiring so things in the world will need power um and your multi-tool once you activate a little combine power node uh will when you hold it up to a wall in the game it will uh reveal and you can follow along and trace the power line and rotate these little nodes you know press a button to change them and reroute the power kind of this yeah yeah this i found um uh, was neat uh, because it involves exploring the space, which is fine mm-hmm. when you can move around, you know, and like moving between these lockers to open them and empty them so you get access doesn't require doing the uh, the teleport. If you do not have space, I can see how it'd be very tedious. Well, they, they were good when they were smaller zones. Yes. Uh, and when they required me moving too much and I had to teleport mm-hmm. uh, multiple times during it, uh, I would just lose the thread yeah. of it because I teleported. Uh huh. You know, through there, and you have to, they get complicated. You have to keep in mind a, a fairly large grid of mm-hmm. these because they don't, they're not just connect A to B. Sometimes they're connect A so it splits into B and C. Yeah. Uh, or further complication. They do a really cool thing with this uh, later during the, the good chapter, you know, the best chapter of this, mm-hmm. um, the, the spooky chapter. Um, <laughs> they do a really cool thing with this, but it is uh, something that also wore out its welcome. I would, I would, uh, agree it wore out its welcome less quickly yeah. than the other ones which i really only liked once yeah um there, there's a little <laughs> memory match on a sphere there's a thing where you have to uh there's several they're all irritating stick y- yes. basically like <laughs> there's two forms of irritating stick you have to move a thing and avoid little red hurdy nodes mm-hmm. uh and then there's a memory match one and there's one where you just have to find the right position uh for a little glowy bit bob for it to go mm-hmm. for a lot of these lines to connect yeah yeah uh, and and these are these are just all projected as holograms out of the out of yes. the device and it is just it is real just uh like uh, there are you know, tons of them <laughs> cracker barrel t- thir- 30 29 it, it, it's, <laughs> it is, it is crackle barrel cracker barrel uh 30 29 it's everything <laughs> that you have to open up that isn't uh unlocked or locked with a padlock uh-huh any electronic lock in the entire game 
is one of these things, including like just little ammo caches. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it ended up feeling like an immense patient's tax to me. Yes. Um, it looks neat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks like you're, you know, it's like an Iron Man Hollywood display kind yeah. of thing. You know, you're moving the sphere around. It looks super cool. Yeah. Um, but it, it just, yeah, lost its, you know, lost its yeah. uh, luster. Um, the level design in this is good. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's really interesting how it has been changed. Yeah. Um, two things. So, for example, like they're they're working on a total conversion of this because uh, this has workshop. Someone's working on a non VR version of it, mm-hmm. uh, which I like because this again, or as keep, I mentioned, yeah, without or, spoiling, it's a Half Life game. Yeah. Uh, if you like Half Life, this is not a guidance story. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you should play this. Um, it's the encounter design is cool in VR, but I don't think it would translate very well. Right. Like there are fewer enemies. They're dumber and slower. They don't react to grenades and stuff like this is all a kindness, you know, in VR as an infant medium. But like with a mouse, this would be the easiest thing in the world. It wouldn't be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, so the level design, when it's teaching you how to do things, uh, it's very good level design. Um, There are little antecedents. They give you a little practice room. Mm -hmm. To try things like you have a new gun or you have a new weapon. Here are grenades. Here are a bunch of very grenade friendly situations. Yes. So you can learn how to use grenades. That all, that stuff is all really, really good. Mm -hmm. The encounter design, I think is pretty lackluster. Mm. Um, when I was feeling tension and, and having fun with it, it just felt like I was having fun because it was VR. I kept running into situations with, and this is a ludicrous thing to say, but one of the things that occurred to me during this was I was like, I could do this so much easier if I was playing this on a video game. I could also uh-huh. do this much easier if it was just me. <laughs> like, how how am I having a harder time than Gary Butterfield would have? <laughs> Overweight <laughs> podcaster Gary Butterfield would be better at fighting this head crab zombie than Alex, an avatar with this medium. Yeah. Like, um. that felt real weird. <laughs> Gary Butterfield is not is not up to this uh, situation. Neither is Cole no, Ross. No, nobody is playing like Half Life Gary Shift Pod Shift. <laughs> you know, like it, it's opposing you know a potting forces. Like <laughs> nobody's doing that. Like it it just felt real weird. You mm-hmm. know, and th- this that was a, a a shadow of like whenever I was trying to like position myself perfectly for a puzzle when I was trying to do stationary VR for it. Uh, mm-hmm. which I eventually ended up getting, you know, as I mentioned before, I gave up on and just did, you know, hurt my hands in my small room and uh, my small office uh, instead. But the, uh, it was just, it would have been easier to yeah. not to actually be there. And that's a wild ass thing for a video game to do. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, the level design is really, really good. Uh, in terms of teaching the encounter design, I think is pretty lackluster, but I don't know where the line is between that uh, being a design thing or it just being you know vr the aristocrats you know <laughs> yeah yeah um i don't know uh, I, I i i i cannot say stein is uh, my my critical vocabulary <laughs> something that i think is 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 good actually yeah. like i don't know if you can do this in another situation uh is this major departure which is that you have uh you do not have a silent protagonist uh yes. alex speaks uh, and is in constant radio contact with a new character, uh, this older uh, scientist uh, who's part of the resistance. His name is Russell, voiced by Reese Darby, uh, yes, who, who voiced Helper's brother, uh, and is you know the, the manager from Flight of the Concords. If, if if somebody is doing a parody of a New Zealand accent, they are actually it's just Reece doing Reese Darby. Darby. Yeah, Re- yeah. Reese Darby only does one thing. <laughs> it's like just he's. real charming. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just real charming. It's real good. <laughs> uh, what's interesting about this uh, is this is this was new. Um, this game went through a lot of different drafts. Mm-hmm. Originally, it was much bleaker uh, and more serious. They brought in Reese Darby to lighten it up. Yes, um, that was not the original intent. That's something playtesters reacted to because they did not like it. Uh, they mm-hmm. didn't like being in this dour world. Yeah. So they brought in a portal esque funny yes. companion um, for this, uh, and it, it's it's funny. Like it's, it's good, good, and it's it's, it's a real good decision. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing about this game, uh, I got to hand it to him is, uh, two elements of how it visually looks, you know, so the audio is there and the sound design is always good. Valve is great at doing sounds, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the half light or the, uh, combined flat line sound, the ringing in your ears after a grenade, <laughs> like all that stuff yeah. is iconic, uh, for a reason. It's very good. Mm-hmm. Um, 
visually this looks great oh yeah uh, it is a great looking game it is really really neat to see these spaces and things and it has a similar quality to the re4 vr remake where these are uh holy mm-hmm. you know like these seeing a barnacle mm-hmm. in this in this kind of detail and this fidelity and actually watching it from every angle spit up its bones and everything <laughs> that is that is a, a holy video game enemy you know mm-hmm. like it, it it's awesome like i've thought about these things forever you yes. know and i'm seeing them in a whole new way and experiencing them in a whole new way that has tons of value mm-hmm. I, you know and just looks good and this game goes further than other half-life games have done in terms of like creepy corrupted environments yes um and being in them feels great uh-huh. <laughs> uh, it, it feels different with with vr like it it is purely additive it's like to me in terms of the vr element of this it is the one absolutely unqualified success oh god yeah. um of just being in this slimy corridor feeling 100 percent different than if i were playing it mm-hmm. just on a screen it would just be a texture right like if yeah. i was in the hallway it's like oh yes i would make a note of the biome and think about like the you know okay this is this happened here etc why is this more infected than others you know for like a minute and then i'd move on it would become part of the wireframe very little of the visual design in this became a part of a wireframe for me yeah because it was also present same uh especially after about the first you know third to a half mm-hmm. of the game like this game picks up it's it starts off um a little bit pedestrian because it's getting used to everything mm-hmm. and just at the time where i was like okay i've been in this is my like 10th storage room full of paint cans yep you know and it started losing its luster you start going to more interesting spaces <laughs> um and the spaces are really interesting yeah um enemies look great uh seeing them move uh one of my favorite things about this is corpses Mm-hmm. um you know there'll just be a dead guy next to you and you can uh they pin them to a place you can't just pick them up and manipulate them uh which sucks because i kept wanting to feed them into barnacles but the <laughs> uh you can grab like the guy's head and kind of move it around mm-hmm. you know that really worked for me uh yeah. when it was spooky and slimy and creepy um, i mean that that's kind of the thing about vr is that horror stuff is the thing that makes it especially work like that like that's that's the stuff that sings that and mini golf. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, uh, if, if only they could combine the two, I, I, I can move a paint can in real life. I can, <laughs> you know, it, it's just not that exciting to me. Like it's novel, uh-huh. but you know, grabbing a, you know, lifting up a dead guy to look under him to see if he has ammo under mm-hmm. him is not something Gary is, is, you know, real flesh. Gary is, yeah. uh, given to do get, get getting a real up close look at, you know, what a head crab zombies face looks like under there. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you saw a little bit of that, like that was, that was present. But again, uh, the fact that here it is present capital P well, and, know. and it's also been 13 years or whatever since the last half life. So the, there have been True. graphic advances even outside of VR. Yes. Like even if you made this game just in traditional, mm-hmm. uh, it would look better. Yeah. But it, it a combination of the two ends up being a huge force multiplier for just like yeah. seeing things from a new angle. Uh, mm-hmm. That consistently very impressive uh, to me throughout the whole yes. game. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Uh, yeah. Really, really good. No notes, just A pluses. Yeah. Um, so as you mentioned, uh, so development on, on these Half-Life games stalled out. Uh, Valve could not figure out a way to make Half-Life 2 Episode 3 work. Uh, and they abandoned it kind of famously mm-hmm. um as you know because there hasn't been a half-life for you know, 13 <laughs> years or whatever um valve's corporate structure is this one where employees kind of freelance internally um so there were incentives uh, or there weren't incentives there for a huge team to come together to make a project on the scale of a new half-life game right. uh, that was not really uh, a thing mm-hmm yeah. And so as Valve stopped making these story based single player experiences, their writers left. So, like Mark Laidlaw, Eric Wolpaul, Jay Pinkerton, and Chet Falizek, they left Valve in 2016 and 2017. I believe it was Wolpaul that uh, released the Epistle 3. Um, yes. that uh, described like, hey, here's here's where this would have gone if we were able to continue. And people are just like, oh, yeah, we're just we're just not going to get that again. We go back and listen to our Half-Life 2 or Half-Life 2 um, yeah. uh, episode, you know, for that it, last check in because little yeah, it's sad. Like yeah. it is, it, you know, a major gaming franchise that was beloved and creatively uh, really successful just ended for what felt like no reason. Mm-hmm. You know, like from the outside just seemed like arbitrary, dumb corporate 
bullshit. And you would just hear all these things, you know, Valve's not making single player games anymore. They think the future is in, you know, all this stuff. And it was just all so fucking disparaging, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, depressing stuff. Yep. Um, however, uh, Valve partnered with HTC to create the Vive uh, VR <laughs> health headset and gave Newell thought, hey, it would be a good idea uh, to be like Nintendo and make a game for this new piece of hardware. Like, yeah. let's show off the piece of hardware and do, you know, how Nintendo will be like, here's a Mario game. Learn the DS. Yes. I mean, even though that was Mario 64, but, you know, mm-hmm. uh, they just released that. But, yeah, that kind of thing. Yes. Uh, and so when they said, OK, let's make stuff out of VR, it would make sense to go through their existing uh, properties. And uh, Portal was deemed uh, just you know way too disorienting. Uh, and they realized, oh, like Half Life actually probably is the best, the 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 the, the best fit for this, and so they yeah. started trying to decide what to do. Um, uh, they chose this. They chose to uh, do a side story. Uh, you know, like if this was going to be a side story at the start, uh, but uh, they feared this because they feared that if they did like a full sequel in this, that was VR only people would people would be pissed and people would be right to be pissed yeah it, it would suck and yeah. it, it and i you know on the record i think it sucks so this is vr only i'm yep. really glad that they have a workshop so they're making a total conversion that everyone can play mm-hmm. um it's not an inclusive platform right like just full stop um it was difficult uh, for them to assemble uh, and then say, man, not even, I didn't even think about people with disabilities. You know, if yep. you have vision, uh, mm-hmm. even not, I'm not even talking about like, oh, you know, you can play regular Half-Life if you're totally vision impaired. Even if you're partly visually impaired, mm-hmm. this would probably be very difficult. If you're um, missing an eye. I yeah. Don't, yeah. I, I don't know. It It's not an inclusive platform. Right. Um, so it was, it was difficult for them to assemble a team uh, for this project because the the internal people who were there weren't used to anything of the scale. The external people, like the writers that they end up inviting back, uh, <laughs> largely to fix that tone. Yeah, uh, things stuff I mentioned earlier, were skeptical that Valve would finish it. They've it's been like, on that roller coaster before. It's like you know why we left, right? <laughs> yeah, like you you just you you just stop making games so you don't have to, and you just put out something every ten years, uh-huh. uh, you know, and then just be quiet. It's weird. <laughs> Uh, (laughs) it's a weird company uh so uh then they said about working to make this uh the process you know involved lots of difficult choices they made a lot of very good ones but uh you know they had to like slow down the pace of play uh because uh, the the half-life amount of enemies coming at you at the half-life speed would just be too much um, yeah. This also caused them to, you know, emit some enemies entirely. No fast head crabs in this because they freaked people out. Yeah, they would be awful. And even zombies are real slow. Yeah, uh, nobody's in a hurry to get anywhere in this game. Uh-huh. Everybody walks at at absolute Sebastian Castellanos paces. <laughs> it's an amble uh, at the at yeah. The most. E- even the even the just normal combine soldiers mm-hmm. do a light jog into cover from time yeah. to time, like. Um, the original version of the story, way darker, as we mentioned before, uh, much more horror uh, oriented and very oppressive. Yeah. Um, you know, it was trying to show what it was really like in C-17. Uh, Alex would have been rescuing her father from a combined officer uh, and uh, the killing, killing him uh, for torturing him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the G-Man would return uh, to Black Mesa. Uh, her and the G-Man would return to Black Mesa and stop Gordon Freeman from triggering the alien invasion in the first place, yeah. uh, which was also deemed too impactful. Yes, too much. Um, there was a, a version with uh, Breen cast where uh, they were torturing mm-hmm. uh, her father and then uh, projecting those over the city. Um, also, he was forced to read propaganda, things like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And just nobody liked it. It was too bleak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they tested and they're like, oh, we, we love the play. Like, we're actually sold on the VR for this. Like, that works. Mm-hmm. Uh, this story is bullshit. Like this, that this, this has got to go, and you got to give it to Valve. Like there was a business pressure for them to finish this um, on time because they were releasing their own VR headset at the time. Uh, in 2019, they were putting out uh, the Index, but they decided, no, we're going to take the time, we're going to do this right, uh, and they delayed it, and they brought people in. Uh, not yes. only uh, uh, Eric Wolpaul and uh, uh, Pinkerton. Uh, but also they brought in <laughs> idle thumbs guys. <laughs> they yes. brought, yeah. They brought in Jake Rodkin and Sean Vanneman, uh, who had, uh, worked on, uh, and directed and wrote the walking dead season one at telltale before forming Campo Santo to create firewatch, uh, good writers, those guys. 
uh, good mm-hmm. for like this kind of tone uh, that uh, we ultimately ended up getting funny, you know, sweet stuff like that. Like having them to do moment to moment and having the old hands to do like scenario and world kind of stuff was a really good mix. It, it's it's actually um, a little bit hard to see who did exactly what. The yeah. the thing I read was that uh, they brought back in uh, Woolpaw, Woolpaw and uh, Pinkerton uh, with Vantaman to do the writing. Hmm. Uh, Jake Rodkin and Chris Remo are both credited, but if you look on Moby Games, they're just credited as Valve. That's way- like yeah, there's well, not I mean, a position. I, well, everybody is credited as just yeah. Valve in the actual credits themselves. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So so, but there's a, I had read text about the people they brought on to do the lightness pass. Mm. Uh, which i believe included sean yeah um but the uh yeah it's 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 hard to know exactly who did what mm-hmm. during this which is interesting you know and that's yeah. that's admirable i'm i'm kind of glad it's mm-hmm. all just a team effort yes good yeah uh good for them mm-hmm. um this released to a lot of acclaim uh this moved a lot of units uh the uh a lot of you know all the big vr headsets that would be compatible with this sold out the week this was announced mm-hmm you know, like we're impossible to get uh, because people were buying headsets in anticipation. There's a new this. Half-Life game. You want to play it? <laughs> yeah. Everybody loves Half-Life. Yeah. Um, however, uh, you know, the audience is limited because of hardware lockout, uh, both the those inclusivity reasons and then also just people who have 400 bucks to spend on a VR head, headset, mm-hmm. you know, no. um, and people who are locked in different ecosystems. Yes. Um, I think Will would, my friend Will would really love this game, but he has a PSVR. You know, True. Rawr, rawr. Yeah. You know? no. it, <laughs> it's, it's a bummer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just, uh, they, they, they knew that sales were going to be bad. Uh, but uh, I don't think anybody, um, I mean, I guess people could probably expect that the impact would be limited, but, uh, like it kind of also didn't make a lot of waves outside of people who are already curious about VR, you know, like this mm-hmm. is not a game that you see people talk about. Uh, the Wikipedia has an amazing uh, poll quote from a postmortem done at PC Games in where they say that it had all the cultural impact of a Michael Buble album. Uh, and I would like to con- I would like to contact a policeman because a murder just took place. It's, it's really mean. <laughs> uh, yeah. it, it's the accuracy is in that, uh, like Michael Buble, most people I know who have who have played this really love it. <laughs> but most people who are not going to be in the market for it or can't be in the market for it just have no opinion. Yes. Similar to like Mark Michael Buble. Right. You know, like this is one of those things where a hundred percent of the people I've talked to have played it really love it. Mm. And 1% of the people I talked to have played it. Yes. You know, uh, in that way it is unto Michael Buble. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's again, very interesting. You know, mm-hmm. uh, the, uh, the impact that it has that I like, yes. um, is that valve is saying, oh yeah, half-life, mm-hmm. uh, you know, here's half-life it's back. Uh, as I, we keep alluding to, this is a real half-life game. It is not a guiding shooting gallery. Um, there v- very well may be more half-life. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but- and I want more half-life. I don't know that I necessarily want more half-life just in VR. No, no. If this just restarts half-life. Mm-hmm. like yahtzee yes half life is good a These plus it's justified good. it's justified yep. even out of like the neatness of moment to moment yeah yep and even if they uh just if they do put it on vr and they're still allowing this workshop support so fans can make a a version for everyone mm-hmm. yahtzee yeah i like way into that um yeah it felt really good to to kind of be home uh-huh. you know it, it, the hearing the sound effects and, and the sounds and seeing the imagery of this stuff that is you know, it's really cool, uh, yeah. games, you know, I'm not like a half-life guy the same way. I'm like a fallout or a dark souls guy, but it still felt awesome. It's, it, it's really hard to have been playing PC games in a certain era and, you know, not feel, uh, like half-life is home to a degree. Yeah. Uh, yep, the, yep. Yeah. So it really is, uh, a, a, it's something that could have gone sideways very easily, you know, again, playing around with these holy spaces and the fact that it did, that it did feel like coming home also is a bit of a justification for the project because they, yes. uh, because they nailed it. Yeah, they absolutely did. Uh, so it, it is a uh, welcome back. <laughs> I can, I can say that, uh, at the, uh, at the absolute minimum. Yes. 
Um, that is going to be the uh, we'll, you know the next the rest of the episode is when we'll talk about the uh, the actual individual parts and there's a lot of cool stuff and that's where we'll talk about the plot. However, that is for patrons. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are hearing this, we thank you for listening so far. If you'd like to hear the rest and hear the rest of our premium episodes, head on over to patreon.com slash duckfeed TV. Yeah. At five dollars a month, you get all of them, not just the rest of this episode. Uh so coming up on five years of them, I think, something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a bunch, so uh, it's worthwhile. In addition to whole other shows like Unfilmable, uh, Bonfireside Chat, uh, bonus episodes of Abject Suffering, uh, we jam packed it with value. We think, yeah. Um, if you are a non-white dude, non-white cis. Uh, non-white person creator uh, and have a project like this us to highlight please send me an email at gary at duckfeed.tv uh, this episode i want to draw some attention to saka says uh, mm. on youtube that's s-a-k-k-a says um criminally undersubscribed youtube um saka does really really long form uh video game kind of criticism mm. and investigation uh, the most recent thing is this uh feature length uh, thing about Mario and Sonic at the you Olympics say, Games. You say, <laughs> yeah. oh, this is that person. Neat. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I knew about this. Wow. Um, the, uh, there, there was some virality to uh, their video on Samus Aran. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, 312 subscribers, which is very surprising to me uh, given the production values. Yeah. Um, which are really, really high. You say feature um, length on that Mario and Sonic one. That's Marvel feature length. That's two hours and it, 50 minutes. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's it's Wakanda forever. Uh-huh. Uh, who who stole the soul of the Mario and Sonic investigation? Uh, yeah. <laughs> really, really cool and, and very surprising uh, yeah. that they have this few subscribers. So check them out. Uh, you know, they are uh, they are worth checking out. Hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, agreed. Yeah. So that's Sokka says. Uh Everybody else, we will see you next week for The Dispatch, where we talk more about these difficult questions about what is the critical value of neat? <laughs> uh, like, how do you talk about that? What does that mean yeah. in terms of the quality of a work? Yeah. Uh, as you're hearing this, it is too late to write in about um, uh, November's games. But if you have thoughts about um, if you have thoughts about Torment, Tides of Numenera or Shadowrun Hong Kong, uh, you can write in at duckb.tv slash contact uh, by the by December the 15th. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And uh, until next time, take care. Bye bye. Uh, yeah, we like you. Bye.